If I could turn the camera around, but uh, it'd probably be like this. Oh, this shit. Yard. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the strength and conditioning right now. Got to clean up green yard work. It's out here like a jungle right now, man. I've been out in oh, Michigan yeah, for a long time, so you know I got to come back home and get things together. So yeah, you're in yeah. St. Louis at home right now. Yeah, I'm in St. Louis. Yep. Okay. Hell yeah, bro. How much time we got? Just so, just you probably got to get oh, back yeah, to work, yeah. right? Oh yeah, yeah. Probably got a nice little 10, 15, whatever. You know. Just okay. Little, for sure. Regular boy. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's get right into it then. I mean, dude, you're trying to get a fight. It's been about close to two months since your last fight. Um, what's been going on, man? How come you can't seem to get a fight going? Boy, shit, your guess better than mine. I swear to God. You know, so I've been doing all the promoting that I feel like is necessary in order to get a fight. I've been calling out fighters and not just calling out very, you know, entertaining and very creative ways that I thought that uh, people would want to, you know, bang me. But yeah. regardless, though, you know, we haven't heard a word from the UFC. Uh, of course, y'all already know that, you know, we, me and Brian Battles made a verbal agreement to fight each other August 19th. UFC didn't call him. UFC didn't call me. I thought that would be an easy little, you know, matchup to make. But, you know, at the end of the day, the UFC makes all the calls. So, you know, I guess I just, I guess I got to wait. Okay. Have you heard anything like why they haven't reached out to you yet? Are they maybe looking to book you like a couple months out from now or you really haven't not, heard anything? Nathan, Nathan, they don't, they don't, they don't speak to us about, you know, their plans and, the motions on where, where, where the business goes. Because at the end of the day, we just the product, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just do what they say. That's it. Okay. Um. So as far as, like, who you want to fight next, I think maybe what's holding it up is, because I was looking at Tapology and there's not, like, that many fighters who are coming off a win right now close to your ranking. I think the only two guys are, like, Brian Battle and Mike Malott. So I mean, but I the thing the is, is. My, my ranking ain't nothing special. I'm 42 in the world or some bull crap like right, that, right. you know? So it don't matter who we fight. You know, I'm not looking to find a winner. I'm not looking to find a loser. I'm just trying to find a name now. You know, at first I was looking for those big names. I was looking for those highly ranked fighters. But that's as a competitor, that's what I got to do. But regardless, mm -hmm. I want to fight. So it don't matter who they bring to me, you know, just bring somebody, you know. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I saw you also called out Lazy King and he's not in the UFC. Hey, boy, so boy you... <laughs> he tricked me, boy. He got me. I ain't going to lie. Hey, hey, good hustle, though. That's a good hustle, he, uh, but he got yeah. a great following. So find out he got a great following in France. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are looking to get him into the UFC. They want to see him on the biggest stage, you know, because he's been dominating where he's at. Uh, so I understand it, and I get it, you know, and I'm not mad at dude for trying to take his shot. And I'm willing to give that boy a shot if the UFC trying to throw him in there. Shit, you know, so okay. it is what it is. I'll bless him, you know, bless him with his good ass whooping, but at least he'd be a contract fighter. All right, and I actually got another Russian I, I was looking at. Um, he's ranked a little bit below you, but it's good that you're saying that you don't really mind about rankings right now. Um, Abubakar and Amagomedov, uh, Khabib's Abuba, cousin. Abuba. Man, what's up with these names, bro? <laughs> Abdul, Abuba. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Man, I don't he's care, He's in the man. UFC, though, so that could be a good that's, fight, too. I don't know. Just want to throw him, like, that's the a, list, you know? That's a blessing, you know? At the end of the day, I, I'm here to fight all the best people around the world, and that's the cool thing about being in the UFC is fighting people of all different cultures and all different places and backgrounds. So anybody can get it from any man, from any place around the world can get this ass with. It don't matter. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And I guess let's try to be a little bit more specific because the opponent isn't like someone who's like out there right now. So are you looking at a date maybe to get back in there? You're calling for UFC Boston, but maybe like Abu Dhabi in October. What are you looking at for like your next realistic date? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, it don't matter. You know, uh, it seems like a lot of these fights is, you know, overseas right now. It seems mm -hmm. like Abu Dhabi, Australia, Paris, you know, so it don't matter to me. I just need a date. That's it. So at first I was looking for August, but it, how close is we to August right now? Like, yeah, like a, a week or two away. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah. why y'all trying to call me for these week notice if they do call me for August, right? So I said, uh -huh. hey, I told my manager at least, I said, don't worry about August, but if September, anything pop up, let me know which they should be able to tell me something now around this time in July if I got a fight coming up, whether September, October, something like that, you know. Uh, but, yeah, okay. September is what I'm, I'm definitely looking for. And, yeah, I like, I like to travel. So whether that's Paris, whether that's Australia, whether that's Abu Dhabi, yeah, I want to I wanna be out there. Okay, so Paris, Australia, Abu Dhabi, because well, I think September is the Perth. You know, no, more, no more Apex. No more Apex. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, get yeah, you I in my some job. fans. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, 
So how's your training going, man? Because are you kind of like in a position right now where you're fully training or are you just kind of staying every in day. shape? I train every okay. day, G, you know, uh, right now we away from the team. You know, I'm more focusing on my family. Like I said, you see me doing that yard work back there. I've been away from my family. I've been away from my grandmother, who's everything to me, who's my heart, you know. So right now it's just focusing on my family, focusing on my priorities and, you know, just, you know, my responsibilities as a man. So that's what we're doing right now. But we train every day. We about to get this work in out with my homeboy, Edric. We about to do some calisthenics. Actually get ready for that because now we about to start dropping some YouTube videos of me doing my calisthenic workouts. You know, okay. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, that shit gonna go crazy. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Is it just uh, New Mansa on YouTube, or what's the name of the channel? Uh, it's actually Joaquin Buckley Official, because you know New Mansa. You know they they didn't took that. You know USC didn't yeah, took yeah. that away from me. So uh, it's Joaquin Buckley Official. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Um, so as far as like training right now, more like just strength and conditioning and like calisthenics and shit like that. Because you're yeah, away yeah, from yeah, the just gym. simple stuff, man. Simple stuff, stuff that got me into the UFC in the first place. You know, so we just okay. getting back to the old. Rugged work, you know, that club of lane. I don't know if you know that, you know, that Rocky. Uh, but, yeah, you know, yeah. we old school with it, you know. So we just, we always keep the mentality that can't nobody stop me from putting in my work, you know. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody slow that down. They might slow down the process of me finding a fight. They might slow down the process of me being promoted and not being in the media. But they can't stop me from working. Every day, right. bro, we working. We clocking in, bro. I'm in the best shape of my life right now. So, you know. So whenever we do get a fight, trust me, we're going to be ready. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, there's no off-season, right? So you always got to be getting in that work a little of bit course, somehow. Of course, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, so we got about, I don't know, like eight minutes left. So let's just get oh, into yeah, some man. of the fun whatever, things that Whatever you got on your mind, dog. Whatever. All right, all right. Let's talk yeah, about nothing, it. So, nothing is off-limits, baby. Nothing off-limits. All right, hell yeah. Except for my Dude, money. Colin, uh, Kamzat, I, I've been seeing your post. You're like, your mama's a hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I ain't said that. Now, Where's that now. coming from? If you gonna, if who, you who said that? Who said that? If you're going to quote me, quote me right. I said, yo, Who said mama, that? My bad, my bad. Yo, yo, mama raised the hoe, right? Raised the hoe. My bad, my yeah, bad, my yeah. bad, my but bad. But if your mama raised the hoe, she might have been one too. So, <laughs> <laughs> on the game. Are you pissed at him or what? Why? Why are you coming after him like that? Man, what you mean, bro? Like everybody think, everybody think that uh, Hamza is this sweet, innocent little punk ass. Like this dude being a bully, right? So when I got knocked out uh, in Abu Dhabi from Alessio. Right, mm -hmm. randomly he laughed like on, in one mm -hmm. of the comments, and I ain't never forget it. So all right, ever since then, I was like, okay, it's like that, you know. So you, since you think shit is funny, I said I'm gonna give you something to laugh about when I knock your ass out, you know. Okay, yeah. So that's yeah, one yeah, on your mind. Yeah. He's on your hit list for that. Oh, main reason, main reason, yeah. you know, because you thought shit was so funny when somebody else had failed, but I, I find it funny that nigga almost died from a car. Uh huh. Ain't that hilarious? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost retired. Bitch ass motherfucker should expire. It's all right though. Yeah. Oh, I actually thinking back, he even tried to act like he didn't really know you back in the day. So yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah, definitely yeah. That, be and that's the funniest list, part. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the funniest part. But we already we already know that's cap, you know? Yeah. Uh at the end of the day, it was three names that uh Dana White spoke about, you know, about 2020 or you know, to watch out for in 2021. That was me, Kevin Holland, and Hamza Tremaya, right? Hamza yeah. Tamayo told Dana, do not mention those guys' names with mine and whatever, whatever the cap. But I just find it funny that when Dana White mentioned all three of our names, all three of us went on, you know, the downslide, right? Me losing mm -hmm. my uh, Abu Dhabi fight, which it was aired on ABC for the first time ever, right? And my ass got straight fucking annihilated. Kevin, uh, Kevin Holland went on a fucking three-fight, four-fight losing streak, right? And then Hamza, yeah. like I said, almost died from a, uh, from a common cold, you know? So I, I think Dana White, yeah, he don't need to be uh, promoting no more fights, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he, worse than Drake. <laughs> <laughs> he worse than Gave Drake. He worse than Drake. Gave you the Drake curse. Yeah, the Dana White curse. curse. Dana curse now. Dana White curse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned Kevin Holland. Though. Are you guys homies or what? Because he, he's poking fun at you, but then you're like, you're kind of chill with it. Like, what, what's oh, cool. the deal? Why, why, why would I be mad? You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, we, 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 we both keep the same energy, so... It's, yeah. it's, it's mutual love between both of us, but at the end of the day, you know, I want that rematch. I want to fight yeah. again, you know, so whenever that time comes, I'll be ready. That's it, you know, okay. so, you know, Kev, Kev trying to stay away from me as far as possible because he got that win, he got that dub, you know, so he just want to uh, live with it and, and just keep that in his pocket, but yet again, like I said, whenever the UFC sees an opportunity to make that fight happen, they'll make it happen, you know. Okay, yeah, I'll be you gotta tell him to stay at 170 then, because I saw his story. He's already trying to get a catch with Michael Chiesa. 
What you mean catch weight? Catch weight. Catch weight. Oh, because you guys are both fighting at 170 right now, right? Yeah, but what you mean catch weight? Catch weight or what? He was just like, I think he might be joking, but he's like, dude, I'm already overcutting weight. Like, you want to do like 180? <laughs> so yeah, I guess yeah. he wants to move care, up to back care, 185. Care, 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 care motherfucking 180 soaking wet. So I ain't trying yeah. to do bullshit. <laughs> that motherfucker built right. like Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? Skinny ass. But uh, yeah. nah, nah, that, that's that's going to be a fun fight between Kevin Holland and uh, Michael Chiesa. But obviously, you know, Kevin Holland does one good thing and he promotes the fight at the end of the day. So he says whatever just to keep people's attention and remind mm -hmm. people that he's fighting. So, you know, I you know I ain't mad at Kev. I understand what he's doing. Okay, gotcha. And yeah. I just I'll go with three more for you. Just we'll go rapid fire. Uh, what do you think about that fight? How do you think it's going to play out between Holland and Chiesa? There's only two ways: on the feet, Kevin; on the flow, Michael Chiesa. Period. Okay. Period. So they both so got just, opposite throw, game throw, plans. Whoever can execute best. Yeah, yeah, throw yeah. Throw up. Yep. Okay, gotcha. And then um, Ian Gary, a little viral video, uh, a couple of viral videos. I was laughing my ass off at that first one. Yeah. Where you're like, what was it? You're like Ian. Ooh, Conor McGregor or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I forget Conor what you McGregor said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit was funny. But yeah. I don't know. It got a little serious towards the end there. So, um, what's oh, your relationship with Ian right now? Oh, don't ever get not, not it. Serious. Never got serious. Nah, okay. it was just a conversation between two fighters, and I don't understand why people can't like people always think it's hostile for two fighters to be you know in between one another. But my thing is, mm -hmm. this is how we eat, bro. This is how we make money. Let's promote some. Let's talk about some. Even if Ian Gary don't want to fight me, it still does a good job of creating drama and creating a backstory to if it does happen, you know? Right. So I tell fighters all the time, like, you know, don't wait for an opportunity. Go create one. Go create an opportunity. But, you know, a lot of people, they be fearful for a fighter to do something or whatever. Well, motherfucker, if you want to do something, let's do something. But I'm never yeah. coming with that type of energy. I just want to talk. But if you want to turn it into something else, I'm telling you, like, I don't think that's what you want. Because people say I'm already a crazy fighter in the cage. You don't want to catch me in these streets. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's a honey. There's no rules out there. No, nah, for real. Yeah. Sure. But anyway. All right. Uh, two two more. I, I, I I'm you. adding one more just because I saw one on your Instagram. Oh, good, but man. I appreciate the love, okay. man. So, let, yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, bro. Thank you. Um, Because you're in a contract kind of like, you know, not in a contract thing, but you're having a hard time getting your next fight. Uh, Paulo Costa, he just like ended up pulling out of his fight with – uh, that guy Ikram. It seems like it wasn't even ever booked though, and now he's kind of fighting comms up. What are your thoughts on that at all? Uh, I mean, he, you know, Paulo Costa going for a bad, you know, and definitely yeah. if it if the fight was never signed, I mean, the fight was never official in the first place. So mm -hmm. you know, just because somebody makes a verbal agreement, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're not a man, you know, what I'm saying whatever, you don't have to stand on your word, right? So yeah. my biggest thing was, you know, wh whether you know those two people made a verbal agreement or made a contract. Now, if they made a contractual agreement to fight each other, they sign a promotion deal, oh, then, you know, Paul, you got to stick to it. But regardless, yeah. though, if it was never official and they were just saying, like, oh, yeah, we'll fight each other, then, yeah, it is, you you move with the better better offer. That's all that is. Yeah. So, Paul Cox got a better offer and fighting Hamza Shemaya. We would rather see that anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shit. And I guess he kind of played hardball there. So, do you kind of respect that hardball approach with negotiations, even though it – it's kind of hard or a little scary maybe to go for the, you know, go against what the UFC wants, but he seems to have gotten the better fight at the end of the day playing hardball with them. Uh, What you mean by, uh, you talking about Paul Acosta like, playing hardball with them? What yeah, just mean? not what saying yes to so every what, what offer, tactics, I guess. What tactics do you think Paul Acosta did in order to play hardball? So what you talking about? I think that they put out this fight and then they announced it and then uh, it was never official and he held out the entire time basically. And uh, that's kind of like the hardball. So once the fight approached like two Man. weeks from now, it seems like they had to. Bro, it's not it. hardball. If the UFC want to make Paula Costa fight, they gonna make him fight. Don't ever get it twisted. So okay. it was no hardball from Paula Costa. They, uh, if anything, the UFC gave Paula Costa a better deal. Mm. The UFC offered Hamza to him. They changed their mind. So it wasn't you know Paula Costa. You know, hold, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that didn't happen whatsoever. Okay, so you don't think that like I, I know guess that holding happen. out on signing a contract. I is know like, that didn't happen. I know that yeah. didn't happen. Yep. Okay. Because then, guess, if that's okay, I would say this then, right? If that how was do you the know? Case, that's what I'm yeah. If that was the case, then they just would have never set up the fight. Ah. Uh, so then Paula Costa just would have been out, right? And then Emma yeah. Ball, Emma Ball would have just fought the dude that Paula Costa was gonna fight, and then Hamza would have been either fighting Leon that was a motherfucking uh Kamar Usman or some shit, you know? Okay. So all right, I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and don't have a good man. UFC do what they want, baby. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, because it just seemed like, I mean, maybe I was listening to too much Ariel Hawani, but he was just saying how Costa, like, it was never even a done deal. But um, yeah, if it ain't if it ain't a done deal, period, like, yeah, the UFC can't make nothing happen if ain't nothing on contract, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so with that being said, it's never official if you don't sign a contract. So regardless, you never should believe any type of information that, that don't come out or that comes out. But for Paula right. Costa, uh, I'm always going to go with the better deal with a bigger fight, period. Right. Definitely if I ain't signed nothing. If I ain't signed shit, I'm definitely going to go with the bigger deal and sign that boy first. But with the gotcha. UFC, they set up all these deals beforehand. So if Paula Costa did sign a contract, trust me, he will be fighting that dude, period. Gotcha. All right, last one. Is St. Louis the most dangerous country in the U.S.? You say country, you guys are just city. emotionally damaged. You're talking about city? City, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you good? Uh, no, 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 man. We just, like I said before, we, we just emotionally damaged, man. You got a lot of yeah. segregation going on down here. You got a lot of uh, poverty and, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, so we got wealth and poverty right in the same area, you know? So mm. we got this uh, road called Del Mar Road. And you have, like, the Central West End, Forest Park Avenue, everything, whatever, just full of rich folks on that side. And then you will come out this way, Pagedale, you know, uh, uh, down to uh, Wilson, down to Goodfellow, all that other type of stuff, man. And it's straight, just broken down homes, no schools, you know, babies outside by themselves, carrying guns, AR-15s, opening out weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can call us dangerous, but like I said, we just emotionally damaged, man. We just, we need some help out here. We need some leaders. You know, I would yeah. be a leader myself, but man, I'm, I'm I'm just planning on getting my bag and leaving this motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> uh, hey, that's a good idea, bro. I think that's the best call because you're you're getting famous out there, and if it's not a good location, yeah, just yeah, head on yeah, out. You know. Yeah. Um. Did you grow up in that in that area though, where there's guns and shit? This is my house. Yeah. And this there's like kids outside with guns. Yeah. This is where I, this, this is where damn. I grew up at. Yeah. This yeah, man. This is my crib right here. So you know. Uh, pop up if y'all if want to see me, though. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> If I'm ever in St. Louis, I'm going to call you, bro. I want to come through. Where you, where you from see again? You. I'm from California, like uh, L.A. area. So oh, okay. not the LA. best over here, too. But. Yeah, yeah. L L.A. got wild shit going on, too. Don't ever get it twisted. But L.A. so big. So yeah, L.A. got probably right more problems than St. Louis. But St. Louis is small. It's a very small yeah. city. So it's very concentrated with all the murders and robberies and all the other stuff, home invasions that be going on. So that's why 100%. they call it very. That's why they call it dangerous. But other than that, though, uh, is is way more activity out there in L.A. More activity out there in Chicago. More activity out there in Newark than it is in mm -hmm. St. Louis. But since we're so small, they go by the. Uh, uh, I, I think the population and uh, the amount mm -hmm. of people that are there. So that's why they ranked us as number one. Right, and then they like rank it with the amount of crime, so it looks like a higher number. But that makes sense, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, last thing, you don't even have to react to this, but on the way out, I guess NBA young boy, I know you probably fuck with him a little bit. Uh yeah. he says his son, uh, yeah. Kentrell Jr., uh Floyd Mayweather's grandson too. He's Lame like, hey, my son's gonna be a UFC fighter. Oh, he said a UFC fighter? He says he's gonna be a UFC fighter. Uh -huh. Um somebody asked him about his, him boxing. And he's like, nah, my son's gonna be a UFC fighter. So I don't know. Maybe something to look out for. Yeah, you know, you know, I you know, no, I ain't no disrespect to NBA young boy, but I'm I'm sure he was one of them dudes that used to eat glue. In uh, in kindergarten, bro, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think yeah, no, Mizzy need to be a boxer, bro. Yeah, he tripping. Yeah, ain't no money, ain't right, no money you. in the UFC, baby. Until you until you get a belt, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, hey, I feel that. You know, I feel no, that. No disrespect to what I do in, in in my promotion and shit, but at the end of the day, bro, if you if you want to be a fighter, you got to go where the money at, you know. So head over to boxing, then I guess. Yeah, boxing. <laughs> yeah. Why? Hey, why? Why you think motherfucking uh Francis Ngannou went over there? Francis I know. About to get a good bag for. Hey, look. In my honest opinion. I love Francis Ngannou. I tell him yeah. my, in his goddamn face. But I, it, nah, he finna get his ass whooped. <laughs> He's gonna get a good bag. Oh though. my lord, Francis Ngannou finna get his ass whooped. But guess what though? He about to yeah. get fifteen million for that ass whooping. I swear for God. Yeah, that motherfucker is, about to get so. a good check for ass whooping. Now, I take fifteen. The motherfucker, I done got my ass whooped for less. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a million. I'll take like a hundred thousand shit. Yeah. For me at least, you know. Right, right. I got you, yeah. man. Thanks for the interview though, fam. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Have a good rest of your day over there, man.